Um, this is the next phase of writing a musical, video number three. I actually just finished video number two, and I'm not going to have enough time to finish this one. Um, so this is going to probably be a two-parter, because I have to go to work in, oh, half an hour or something. But we're going to get started. Okay, so last time what I did is I worked on this. Let's shrink this down so you can get rid of my ugly face. You don't want to see that. Such a vain thing to have a picture of yourself on the screen. <laughs> oh, man. And, you know, I'm now to the age where vanity does me no good. You know, being vain does not help me in any way at all. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that up there anyways. So that shows that there's still at least a kernel of vanity in me. All right, here we go. Uh, so last time on the last video... I put together the treatment. The treatment, of course, is a short explanation of the plot. So we have Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing the outline. But it's kind of a rough outline. So I make a new file. This one is going to be called Jack and Jumper. rough outline okay so uh, let's title the document center that up now here I'm gonna draw from this document and to create this document. So in the rough outline, the main thing I'm concerned with is putting um, plot points in place. So let's work with those plot points, and they are in this order. This comes from sort of screenplay thinking, but I find that it works well for novels, for novels and um, musicals. In this case, I'm doing a musical, so it works well in this case. Any story. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to do a hook. And then I want to do a significant event. And then I want to do a at least one pinch. Maybe two. I'll put two in here. Then I want to do a Disaster or tragedy? And then I'm going to do the the face off. resolution and then I need uh, at the top of this thing I need to explain the theme of the story so theme is important not because I'm tr it's not like I'm teaching us it's not like I'm teaching a moral and the moral of the story is be nice to baboons you know that's not it it's the theme is what sort of, it's the glue that locks everything together or that holds everything together. And as long as you're hanging everything on theme, on the theme, then you're going to have a stronger piece in the end. So the theme in this case I'm feeling is 
um, uh, let's see, the, uh, let's say people, let's say, I'm going to say you, I'm going to use second person, you can overcome any obstacle. No matter how bad, with the help of a good friend. Okay, so that's the theme right there. So whenever I'm writing anything, I have to think to myself, how does this support the notion that you can overcome any obstacle, no matter how bad, I'm going to say grim instead of bad, no matter how grim, with the help of a good friend. So this sets it up. So you can see if people walk away, if this is the message coming through, oozing through in this story, people are going to like the story more because it has a theme that people enjoy and that they can, they can relate with. All right, so the hook. Um, so this has to happen super early, like first scene or first two scenes. So I am looking at, uh, I'm looking at this. Jumper works security for the South African Railway, brazenly leaps from car to car, finds a bum and kicks him off. So there it is right there. I'm gonna say a vagrant comes flying out of a box car. Um, and then this is this is uh, going to be reveals reveal the competence and uh, you get to see all my misspellings and confidence of jumper. So that's the hook. Now the significant event, that's easy. So we go to the end of act two, through the countryside. At the moment of triumph for Jumper, he miscalculates a difficult leap and falls to the tracks and the train rolls over him. So the significant event is Jumper. Jumper falls, is run over. and loses his job. Okay, so now we gotta do these pinches. Now these pinches are do or die situations. So it's when your character, when your protagonist makes a decision that is gonna pretty much permanently uh, affect the rest of his or her life. So let's look for some pinches in act two. So Jumper gets his job back if he can perform faster with his handicap. Jumper visits the cantina, but he isn't gregarious. He just wants a drink. So let's make one pinch right at the top. So does... Jumper decide to to give up and face ruin or does he decide to try to get some kind of job from the railway maybe what we can do is we can have uh, let's put a little detail here. A conversation. Jumper and 
his boss. The baboon is leading an ox full of merchandise. Jumper convinces the man. Okay, so he decides. So in here, he decides. All right, so that is a pinch because if he decides not to go for his job, his life is going to be vastly different than if he decides to go for his job. So once he decides to go for his job, he has to act in order to um, in order to make that happen. So he convinces. Okay, so then he goes to the market. There's a nice little detail in my mind when he goes to the market he should buy that satchel and I don't know what he puts in that satchel but it becomes kind of a symbol because the satchel becomes significant because he leaves it in the cantina and then a cantina girl brings it to him so something needs to go in there maybe the peanuts um... okay so along with along with buying jumper he the man gives him the satchel and it's full of peanuts. And the man tells Jumper that Jack likes peanuts. So that's that's what it is. So we're hanging it up, not on the satchel so much as the peanuts. So I need to put that into another document. So I'm going to, it's because I don't want to forget since I have the memory of a goldfish. So I'm pulling up this other kind of catch-all document. did I put it? That's the problem. Oh, here it is. So the ideas document, and in here I'm going to put when Jumper purchases Jack, the man, we got to put him in as a character, the ox cart man, gives him a satchel full of peanuts and then I'm going to say Jack gets excited when uh, his master reaches into the bat satchel because he knows he's going to get a treat. So we're going to save that. And I should keep this document open. So all through this process, ideas are going to break loose. And you just have to be organized about where you put them. So here, I'm going to put a new character in here, the Ox Cart Man. See, can you see how can you see how your story kind of comes to life throughout this process? You start at a really high level and then you drill down and down and down. Okay, let's look for another pinch. Okay, Jack sees Jumper struggle and takes the keys from the engineer. There's money kept in the signal house. One day a couple of thugs try to rob the signal house. Jack scares them away with his ferocity. Jumper frequently visits the cantina. But he doesn't pay attention to the dancer. He gathers peanuts from the floor because he can't afford to buy them. Puts them in his satchel. Cantina girl wonder why he's gathering the peanuts. During one of her acts, she moves on in on Jumper and flirts with him. He's too downtrodden to reciprocate her advances. Like the other railway workers in the cantina. After her act, she talks to Jumper. She asks why he's gathering peanuts. He says... They're for his friend. She tells him to bring his friend to the cantina one night. Jumper smiles. Jumper brings Jack to the cantina. I don't know why he smiles. Oh, that's pretty significant, actually. Everyone teases the baboon meanly until the primate goes crazy and causes a ruckus. The two thugs intend to club Jack to death. Jumper jumps in front of his friend. 
Jack is super scared, the cantina dancer. This is a significant event. Gives the baboon a peanut. This breaks up the row. Jumper leaves but forgets to take his satchel. The cantina girl visits the signal house to bring Jumper the satchel. She sees how smart Jack is. Jack sees the sparks between her and Jumper. I'm going to put that down as a pinch. Does Jack risk his life for the baboon in the cantina? Or does he let the men club his friend to death? So let's say the threat is going to turn on him. So this needs to be like, I don't care what you're going to do. You know, I already have two broken legs. You might as well break my arms. So he jumps to Jack's aid. Okay, the disaster's easy. Sister-in-law witnesses the baboon running the railway switch. Alarm, she reports this to her father. The governor sees it for himself and reports it to the railway company. He reports this to the railway president. The railway president tells Jumper's boss he has to fire Jumper and Jack. This devastates Jumper. Getting fired. Devastates Jumper. Okay, so now Jumper is going to... Jumper gets fired. Jumper and Jack get fired. Okay, so... Let's do this. Act 1. Act 2. All right, so with the face off, I'm going to put a pinch here. For the pinch, does Jack give up or does he go after his job? Convinced by the cantina girl, he goes after his job. Now the face-off is when the railway company tests Jack's capability. It's also when Jack thwarts the two thugs. Jack passes the test. And the resolution is Jack and Jumper. Let's say Jumper gets his Jumper gets his job back. Jack is officially the railroad, the railroad company hires Jack Jumper gets the girl. That's it. Okay, so this is sort of the rough outline. So the next step is I need to fill in all of the in-between places and lead up to all of these plot points. But this is enough for this video. So I got to go to work. I'll catch you all on the next one.